Working with reluctant teachers is the same as working with anybody else in the sense that the most important thing, if you're going to develop a relationship with somebody else, is to let that person know you care about them and you're interested in what they have to say. People are reluctant for different reasons. There's not this category of reluctant teachers. There are people who are skeptical. There are people who have been burned. There are people who are tired of changing things from one minute to the next. There are people who have to see something work before they actually will try it out. They want to see it in somebody else's class, um, et cetera. So the first thing you have to figure out is like, what's, what, do you have, what do you have in common? What do you both care about? What's on that teacher's mind? What does that teacher struggle with? What is that teacher interested in learning more about? How does a teacher go about learning, generally speaking? Who are the people on the staff the teacher respects? Who, whose opinions do they seek out? So you may find there's a, a hundred ways from Sunday once you gather the right kind of information from somebody as to how to work with that person. And um, so I think it comes from a real respectful attitude, a real willingness to connect with somebody else where they are, not where you want to manipulate them to be. Because people know when you're trying to manipulate them. So a sincere engagement about that person's interests, concerns, history, passions, um, beliefs, helps you find what I call mutual purpose, that opening, that place to connect. And from there, you plan the work together and figure out how you're going to do it. There's power in building a relationship with teacher practice because teachers and our work is highly personalized. We go into a classroom each day with a group of students. We do the best work we know how to do. And then we're asked to work with a coach and we're, we're afraid. Are they judging me? Is this because I'm not good enough? Is it because I um, haven't been working hard enough? And the answer always to that is no, you've been working the best way you know how. The trust piece and the relationship piece, a lot of people think you have to build trust prior to working with someone. My experience is you build trust by working with someone. So if someone's really nervous about me getting in their classroom and teaching with them, they're not gonna be less nervous if we wait. They'll say, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll let you in. And then after we work together and the lesson is successful and the teacher is able to do things that he or she didn't expect possible, afterwards they say, wow, I trust this person. They led me through the process. So the way I build trust is by going through the work together and trust is developed in those hard moments of working together, not building up trust before we do the work. If your ultimate goal is for people to collaboratively design lessons, collaboratively study student work, collaboratively do things, the goal, you have that goal because research and experience tells us that groups together who are thoughtful, carefully focused and skilled are much more productive than individuals. They're much more creative than individuals. They're more innovative than individuals. All the successful uh, startup companies, like the tech companies, Apple and others, for example, they all work in groups. They work collaboratively. They're innovative and creative because of the kinds of dialogue they have with each other, because of the um, idea of collaborating all the time. That goes against the hierarchical, bureaucratic, isolated history of education. And for some reason, we are still fighting the idea of educators would be better off working together than apart. In schools, our work is to educate children toward independence and success in their, in their lives. And all teachers and educators, principals, parents, we're all collaborating to help the students have the skills that they need. Too often in Canadian education and education around the world, it's these silos of isolation. What happens in one person's classroom is their business and no one else's business. But actually those children move among us. And by collaborating, we say, what is the trajectory of learning that we want students to have across their K-12 experience? How can all classrooms be designed to best meet the needs of those students? And by collaborating and putting our heads together as a collective, we can name best practice, learn from each other, and elevate the work. In isolation, we'll just continue to do what we do in our own classrooms.